instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose Rapture. The artist would not fear the censor, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small. And with the sweat of your brow, rapture can become your city as well. Hello everyone, Fanta here, and today during Fanta's Fright Fest, we're going to be discussing Bioshock. Now, it's really weird that a lot of people don't include Bioshock in their top 10 best horror games. A lot of people include this in maybe their, their top 10, top 15 games, but they never include this as a horror game, which is weird because if you've played Bioshock anytime recently, you can really see how disturbing the imagery is, how scary the beginning is. It's just. It's crazy that so many people leave this game off of their list, because this really is a horror game. You are constantly in this really creepy, dark environment, and there's bloody corpses, blood splattered all over the wall, messages written in blood, there's sometimes they'll spawn the AI right around a corner that you were at before. So even though there wasn't a guy there before, as soon as you turn that corner, boom, he's right on you. So there's even some jump scares in this game. The big daddy is creepy. The little sisters have those demonic glowing eyes. I, I don't understand why people don't consider this a horror game when it really is. And I think this is one of the best horror games ever made because although the game isn't super scary, it definitely has its moments of terror and it's got this creepy atmosphere the entire time you're playing the game. A lot of the bosses are extremely dis- in fact, every enemy you fight is extremely disfigured. Lots of them have different mental problems, and it's- it is definitely a disturbing game as well, especially with some of these diaries and seeing the aftermath of somebody being tortured. I- I don't get why people aren't including this game when it definitely deserves it. This is one of my most favorite games of all time. And if you're looking at the footage here, this game is 10 years old now, can you even believe that? And yet, it looks phenomenal. And this isn't the remastered edition or whatever they called it. This is the original game you're looking at, and it has aged just so well on the computer. So we've gone over a little bit of why I think this game should be included in top 10 horror lists, or just considered a horror game in general. But why is this game so great? Why do I love it so much? It's it's. The simple fact that everything done in the game is just well done. You're not stuck on some linear path where you just walk in a straight line and it's kind of a spooky horror house where things just jump out at you. Instead, the game gives you a level area that you can play around in and the map lets you know where you've been and where you haven't and it's up to you to figure out how to get to all the different places you haven't been. It is also up to you whether or not you want to collect from all of the Little Sisters. Along with collecting the Atom from Little Sisters, you decide how you want to do it. Do you want to go the morality route? Do you want to save the Little Sisters by turning them back into children? Or do you want to go the immoral route but get more Atom ahead of time and harvest the Little Sisters, killing them? The game doesn't blatantly tell you that harvesting these Little Sisters is bad either because the main guy that's guiding you through the game actually encourages you to harvest them because he doesn't consider them human anymore. Whereas the lady that actually created the Little Sisters is begging you to save them. So it's up to you to make that decision, but they don't make it seem like it's just a black and white decision. There is a gray area, and I love that in games. Along with that, the gunplay is wonderful in this game. Guns feel like they ha make an impact when you're shooting someone. They just feel genuine when you're using them. And I love the smoke effect of the revolver while you're reloading. So it's got that little stream of smoke going into the air. It's just little effects like that that just add to the charm of this game. 
Another thing that makes this game unique over other horror games is the fact that you have the same powers as the people that you're fighting. So you can actually summon electricity, you can throw fire, you can use telekinesis, you have all these amazing powers at your disposal that not only are weapons to be used against your enemies, but are also used to solve puzzles in the world to unlock new areas. It's just such a well done game, I, I don't know what I would change in it. Um, I know in Bioshock Infinite you can have the power and the gun at the same time. I think that's really the only change I think I would make. Besides that, this game is near perfection. The constant dread of seeing the water coming in to Rapture as you're walking around. And it's established in the beginning, even if there's a little bit of a leak, you, see, you hear it over the, over the intercom, uh, if there's a little leak, report it. Because with a little leak, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And... <laughs> it's going to fill up Rapture. So there's always this sense of impending doom from this water constantly pouring in. And you're never getting a break from it. Every single level has this water pouring in. And in some wet levels it's worse than others. And sometimes you'll see like a ship or some piece of debris smash into a tunnel and you have to quickly rush out before it fills up with water. And that, I just love it. The claustrophobic nature of this game, even while you're in a wide open space, could only be done in Rapture. Also, every encounter with a Big Daddy is like a boss fight. And you try to figure out the different ways to tackle him. You can like hack nearby turrets, you can hack nearby cameras, so you can have all the different security features of Rapture that are normally on the Big Daddy side work against them. You can also use the crossbow to set up electric traps so you can figure out which ammo you want to use against specific big daddies it's it's definitely a balance of resources as well because you only have a certain amount of money and a certain amount of bullets you're constantly wondering am i gonna run out i don't know if you don't play conservatively enough it can easily happen but if you're like me in a game where at the end of the game you have all the best ammo types, you have all the best health packs just because you didn't want to use them up, then you'll be fine. Also with hacking, for some reason I, I just don't get tired of doing those puzzles. They get more difficult over time in the game and I feel like the scale of difficulty is just perfect. Because as you're playing the game you've been doing lots of hacks in the different vending machines, the different security things, you're really getting used to doing that puzzle and you just get better and better and better as it gets harder and harder and harder. So it's got this perfect difficulty curve that you are constantly keeping up with while you're going through the game. And the puzzle itself is actually a lot of fun. I really don't mind it. I thought I would get tired of it after doing it like 15, 20 times. I'd be like, oh, I don't want to do this. But honestly, I never got tired of doing the puzzle. I'm not sure why, even after playing this game again, I'm still not sick of it. I don't know why, it's just fun. So that's Bioshock. I, I know I was a little bit vague about the game, but I really want you to play this game. If you haven't played this game, you are missing out big time. If you have a PC from the last four or five years, I think you can play this game just because of how old it is now. Or if you just want to play it on the console, I still recommend you go pick it up for the 360 or PS3. It's still a heck of a good time. I love this game so much. Um, I didn't mention Bioshock Infinite because I didn't really see that game as a horror game as much. It does have its creepy elements, but it's constantly bright and you're in the sky and the sunshine. And I didn't feel nearly as creeped out when I played that game as I did Bioshock. Just being underwater in that claustrophobic bloody environment full of disfigured, genetically altered people with the constant audio logs of people in the past discussing how Rapture's going to hell. Just, ah, uh, the, the whole environment, the whole world building of this game is just perfect. So definitely check this game out. If you've beaten this game before, you understand all these different references and what I left out and why I left some stuff out. Would you kindly hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And as always, have a fantastic day.